everyone this is Gail and I'm back with another polymer clay tutorial um you remember this black and white uh, pixelated or whatever you want to call it type the retro cane that I used on this bracelet and I used black and white because I really like black and white but you know I've been wanting to make one that had colors, and I, w I know that you probably would like to see what one looks like with colors. And I have made one before. I don't know if I, I don't think I did a video on it. That was a pretty blue, you know, the color like watercolors, uh, turquoise, aqua, light and dark, and whatever. But I think I'm thinking fall this time. And I believe I am going to try to create one in fall colors. And I didn't do any ecru. One, two, three, four, five. I've got my ecru here. I forgot to, to flatten it out. If you want to wait just a minute, let me condition the ecru. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, thinking fall, I'm thinking the fall leaves, and I probably should have added some yellow to this, but I decided to use the gold instead. So I'm going to use, of course, you, you always need black and white, and I don't know why black and white just seems to really pull the designs together. And then I'm going to use orange. I believe this is pomegranate, and there is a little bit of translucent mixed with this, but most of it is pomegranate. The ecru, primo gold, primo copper, and burnt umber. Because I thought those were all really good uh, colors. And this is a cutter that I keep in my box. I have a little box here that I keep my extruder in, and... I don't know if I've ever shown you the inside or not. I've got my Lucy instru instru extruder there. And then I put these. Actually, these are the magnetic uh, business card holders. I happen to catch those on sale. And I stick, you know, they they stick on to your, uh, wherever you put them. So I stuck them on to the lid. And I keep all of my dies here. Of course, this isn't all of them. But, um... Uh, I also keep this little cutter, and this cutter is not exactly the size of my extruder. I'm going to use the Macon's extruder today, but it's a little bit larger, just slightly. If you let me take the top off so you can see, this is just you know because it fits over the thread, so it's going to be just slightly bigger than the um, ex the hole of the extruder but I like to roll them to get them to you know stuck together so I decided I would go that route I would still use this I use this all the time like I say I keep this in my little box and I'm going to use the it's about a two and a half millimeter round hole I started to try the square, but I don't want to use all this clay and then it not turn out the way I want it. So, actually, why don't I? I have a tiny square extrusion that is Cynthia Tenapple. This is another way I keep extruder extrusions. These are my Lucy Clay um, dies. And here's the little brochure that shows what's in what set but in the back I have these extruder discs from Cynthia Tenapple and there's a small little square and it may be too small but let me see this compared to the circle I think they're about the same. So I am going to try the square just because I feel like they will go together better. So I'm going to put this little square extruder in my cap. And I'm laying my extruder down. And I'm going to use my cutter. And I'm going to cut, cut maybe 
oh, I don't know, six? of each color sorry you have to watch me cut I could have done this ahead of time but so many of you want to see the whole process and it really doesn't take that long Now I'm going to do this one a little different. The other one that I did, the black and white one, I totally mixed the black and the white. You know, I put, you know, like one black, two whites, two blacks, one white, you know, just totally mixed them up. And this time I'm going to be a little bit more uh, consistent in what I'm doing. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to want this to turn out sort of like a Skinner blend, only not a Skinner blend. It's going to be like dark at one end and lighter at the other. And I will do six of the black and white and I'll be finished cutting. Actually, this one isn't really cut very well, so I'll just cut another one. And if the cutters hurt your fingers doing this, you can uh, use an acrylic block to press down. I'm running out of tile over here. One, two, three, four, five. I'll just use my fingers to come up. And I'll go ahead and pull this up while I've got the, there. So this is my black. Let me put this back in with my black. I keep my black and my white here on my table all the time because I use a lot of black and white. And I buy it in the 8 ounce packages. And if you ever decide you want to go that route, I've got them on my new Amazon site. And that link will be below. But there's the white. This is the one that didn't get done very well. The rest I will not wrap up. I will just put them to the side. But I like to keep my black and my white black and white. Alright, this is the orange. And the red. Ecru gold, copper, and burnt sienna. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a white and let me go with the lightest color first. So I'll put two ecrus together. And then a, color, a black. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna double. Well, let's see. Um. Yeah, I think I'll go ahead and put two more of the ecru. I just pulled that apart. I may not need all that I cut. See, now I need to go back to white. After you do two colors, you either put a white or a black, and you just alternate. So now I think I'm going to go to the gold and put two of those and a black and then two gold. See how it's going going to go from light to dark. So then I think the next color I will use will be the orange. So I'll do two orange. 
My last one was a white, so I'll put a black. And then two orange. And a white. I may have to cut some more black and white. Alright, so now I think... Um, let me go with the copper so they won't be right next to each other. I'll do two coppers and a black and two coppers and a white. And you can see how crooked this is, which is why I like to roll them to get them straight. So that's why I use the cutter that's just slightly larger. Now I'll go with the red two reds and a black and two reds and a white. I'm going to need one more white. Well, maybe two more whites. Let me finish. Let me see. So then I'll use the dark brown, which is burnt umber. And the black. I need one more white. Now I've already balled this up, so let me just run it through here one time. And cut one. Let me straighten this out a little bit. I'm, you know, as I work along, I get a little bit sloppier. I guess that'll be all right. And two burnt umbers and a white. And that's probably all I'm going to get in this extruder. So I'm just going to move these out of my way. I didn't know how many it would take to make a long a long thing and let me just spray this where'd my alcohol go oh no my alcohol's gone I think I remember taking it into the other room so let me just wipe it with a paper towel I've got a baby wipe too I could use that but I just want to make sure this is clean Where I'm going to be working. Now I've rolled my extruder out as far as it will go and I do have room but I've got to roll it a little bit smaller for it to fit in there. And you just have to keep keep trying and where is my my little acrylic thing this will make it more even than my fingers my fingers kind of create little divots in the clay so that ought to work and it doesn't really matter which end you put in first, but I do believe I will put the dark end in first. And it's going to be tight. It's just not quite, because you know your clay is kind of st stick into the metal. There we go. Come on, Clay. If I make it any longer, I may have to cut off. Let me cut this off here and cut off maybe one little rung of ecru. I 
probably would have done just as well without it. And just slice in here and cut out another little section. It's getting pretty long. Oops, it's still not going in. I don't think I can get this out much further. Well, I may just have to do away with the ecru altogether. Let's just do that. Just have to smash this in the best I can. Probably shouldn't show you how to do this because it's really not correct. But I've got it in my head what I want. And then screw on your adapter. Let's start extruding. There you go. Can you see it coming out? And of course, the beginning is going to be white because that's what was on the end. Whatever is on the end is going to wrap around. I need my little grip. Here it is. I keep forgetting this. Makes it so much easier. But the white wraps around whatever your bottom color, the last color that you see when you um, put your cap on is the color that's going to wrap around the most. And all the other colors kind of end up inside. But you can see it's getting darker. There's the orange. I'm assuming that's the copper. Now we're seeing a little bit of red. Ooh. Should have used my Lucy extruder. The only thing is that barrel is so much shorter, I wouldn't have been able to put this much clay in it. And I wanted to do it all at one time so it would all kind of be blendy blendy. There we go. All right, so there's our clay. You see it's one long strand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out a ruler, and I'm just going to use my little rings and things ruler. And I'm going to take the light end and make sure you keep track of your ends because you want to be consistent in the way you lay this and I'm gonna cut oh it's already got color so I can start right there sometimes you have to go um, you know several inches before you get color but I got it right away and I'm gonna run this along the side of this ruler and I'm gonna cut it at four inches Then I'm going to move this up. And I'm going to roll this to the same length. 
you can kind of do a, bring your ruler back a little bit now and cut and always bring your cut end up to the top because like I said you want this to all be very close to the same But actually, the end of this one is the top of this one, so they'll never be, they'll never look like each other. Just lay them together. I wanted to try the square mainly because the square seems to fit together better than the circles. Oops, I just dropped my blade. Let me line this up and then I will get it. It's getting harder and harder for me to bend over. Okay, so let me get those, you know, kind of stuck together. They don't have to be permanently stuck together yet. That'll happen as we go along. And just keep taking the cut end and moving it back up to the top. been fast forwarding so you don't have to watch me do this but if you notice I broke the um, the piece it's actually broken again because it's getting closer to the where it's kind of knotted up when I should have strengthened lengthened it out a little bit more but anyway it's no problem because all you need to do is take the end that broke off and just butt it up next to that one and you're fine doesn't really matter. So I just wanted to show you that. I'm going to go back to fast forwarding. Okay, that was my last piece, and I had two little pieces like this left over, so that worked out pretty good. So I, you probably, if you watch the fast forwarding, you saw me every once in a while going in and pressing with my blade, and that was just to make sure that everything was getting stuck together. So now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, I want to see, I want to see. Well, so do I, but now is not a good time to be flipping this up to look at it in the cam. Excuse me, in the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this. And that's four inches. Give you a little preview. Can you see those? Probably can't see the colors very well. But I want to get the edges straight and I want to do it as. See, that looks like the shortest. So you need to cut it at the shortest point, which is going to be about right there. So let me, I'm just trying to get some straight edges. Hopefully that will work. So it's a little bit more, a little bit less rather than four inches. It's more like three and three fourths. So I'm going to cut it at one and seven eighths, I believe. Is that half? One and seven eighths would be here. And then one and seven eighths. So I'm going to put a mark there. And then up here, 
I didn't cut it very straight. But you know, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And to get a straight line, if you have two points, let me just do one up here. So that was three and three quarters. So this is where the other side is. So let me straighten this first down to this corner. And then one and seven eighths is right here. So I have this point and this point, which are both one and seven eighths. So that should be a straight line. Now this is going to be the hardest part. You want to very carefully and try not to separate them. But very carefully, let's see, I wonder if this would work better. It's a little bit wider. Pick this up and move it straight over. Don't turn it. Don't flip it. Don't do anything. Just turn it. Just drop it straight over on top of the other one. And this wasn't such a great idea because now it's stuck to my little kidney tool. So I may have to do this in sections. That's the first section. Just make sure you keep it in the same order. The second section. And how big a section can I get here? Actually, they're kind of small too, but that's alright. I'd rather do it this way than to mess the whole thing up. And again, make sure it gets stuck together. And you'll see that the, it pretty much matches the one that's under it. Just make sure if it doesn't match, then you've put it in the wrong way. And then I'll take the next section. That was a pretty big section. If you have a long blade, which I do, I just don't have it out, it would have been easier with a long blade. And I probably should get it out for the next one. There we go. It's all together. And it's still really not at a point where we can see what's going on inside. Let me get my long blade. It's got handles on it though, so I don't know. Do I have another long one? Here's my Sculpey blade, which also has handles, but that might work. Alright, so now it's one and seven eighths or thereabouts. And we're going to cut it in half again, which would be about, let's see, why don't I just do it this way? How about there? Let's just cut and then pick it up with the blade. See how much easier that was? Oh, I sliced the bottom of it though. That's all right. And just kind of push it together. Now the best thing to do at this point is to push this way. Push from the top and the bottom and really squish it together and try not to let it buckle. 
And then let me see if I can pick it up now and show you what we've got. How do you like that? Would have been prettier with the ecru on this end, but I think we're doing fine. And that, how did that get? That's all right. So this is going to be our cane. And I just want to, like again, just push, push it in a little from the ends, push in the middle so that you don't get the end squished in, but the middle doesn't get squished. Just squish it all in a little bit. Make sure it all meets. And then flatten it out. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's do a... Let's see, which one do I have enough of? Maybe the cop, the gold. I'm going to run a real thin sheet of this. Sorry for the noise, but you know I have a motor on my pasta machine, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do this. And I'm going to make this really thin. This is a number three. And I think I'll go down to a number five. And at this point, I'm going to put it on a plastic sheet. put the pretty side down and just cut off these ends so they're not in the way. But now what you can do is you can take your blade and start slicing from this cane I don't like the way that end is. I squished it too much. Let me square that off a little bit. Square that one off a little bit. But I'm going to just take a thin slice after I get that straight. Just take a thin slice actually I should make this this long let me run this through again and make it a little wider I'll turn the camera off so you don't have to listen to that just okay I'm sorry I just well I knocked my camera kind of wonky or has it been wonky the whole time? But that did not cut very straight, or I didn't cut it very straight. Let's put it that way. But I'm going to turn this this way, and I'm going to um, let me wipe this one off and use this one might be a little bit sharper plus I can pull it if you pull on each side of your blade because see this is pretty flexible if you pull on each side of your blade it keeps it really straight and keeps it from bowing when you cut through your cane and just cut straight down which is not easy when you're not looking over it see, I didn't get that one either I apologize if you're going to be looking at my hair, but I can't cut this without um, looking straight down, or I'm just going to ruin the whole thing. So, let, excuse me, I know you'll see my hair, but I have to look down.
And see, then you can lay it. I think I'll lay that end on. And this still didn't cut straight. This is just too flimsy a blade. I've got to go back. Let me see. There's nothing wrong with me getting a new blade, right? Let me see what my new blades are. If they're... This one's kind of stiff. I'll just have to be very careful when I cut. So I make sure my fingers are not on the wrong side. So you can just slice when you have the right blade. And I have blades on my Amazon site also. Matter of fact, I have pretty much everything I use for polymer clay on my Amazon site. So if you'd like to look at it, I would appreciate it. And let's see, I put the white down. So just start lining these up the way that you want them. And make sure the edges meet and don't tuck in. And you make you a veneer, and then you can take this veneer and turn it into just about anything you want. Let's see, I messed up there. I laid it down and pressed before I checked to see if it was up next to this one, and it wasn't. So let me see if I can fix that. You're going to lose your ends, but that's okay. But this will make a really pretty fall bracelet. Or I could have cut this in half again and made wider, made a wider log here to slice. Whereas now we've got four rows, it would have been eight rows, and it would have been a little bit easier to manage. But this looks pretty good for fall colors. I've, like I said, I've seen it with the pretty water, watery blue colors and whites. I've seen it with green and blue. The, again, the pale water type colors. But I just wanted to try something with some fall colors. Let's see how it turns out. I may use this one on the end. It's not cut straight. Pink just came in to see me. Don't know what that means. Could be anything. She's getting old, poor baby. We really expected her to go long before Daphne did. And I don't know if I can get one more slice or not. Okay, and then you can just, you can stagger these if you want, you can keep them, keep them all in the same direction. I don't know if I would like it staggered, but somebody might. So you do whatever you want. It's remember it's your design. Whoops. 
See if I can get that stuck back together. And before I stick it down, pick it up and move it over a little bit. Because that was not where it needed to be. Now, if you like this end better with the white and the brown, by all means, put that on and put the other end off. I just chose this because I wanted the gold and the bronze or copper, whatever that was. And this one, I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, actually, I've got two little things right here I could probably stick, in, oops, they came apart, probably stick in here. Let me get my needle tool. hard keeping them straight up and down because they're tiny. I'm just trying to squeeze. Let me get, I need to cut some of the outside off of this one. Some of the white is showing. play with it. I'm going to say it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. And you would never know that was pieced. And I don't think this one, it's not cut very well on that side, so I'll put it over here so it can match up over here. Then I would take my roller and roll over it to smooth it out. And here's where I would cut this off. Interesting. You know how frugal I am. I might find something that will that will go with. Kind of looks like shingles for a roof, doesn't it? Ooh, fairy house. Wouldn't that be pretty as a shingle on a roof of a fairy house? And then cut this one straight. Cut the ends off. And you've got a pretty sheet of the retro cane laminate. Let me just come in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now you can take this and you can cut it this way. Let's see, I got this out. This is a bracelet blank and I probably let me just see how this would work. I'm not going to worry about what this looks like. I just need something for my bracelet. put 
this on the bracelet. Now this is a copper bracelet blank or brass. It's not copper, it's brass. And it's got a slight dome to it. I can't wait. One of these days, I'm going to move my studio into another room. Actually, right now, my dogs have the dining room. So, right now, it's full of dog crates. <laughs> and, let me move this over a little bit. And, of course, losing Daphne. Now there's only two dog crates in there. So I've been thinking about moving the dogs in here. And moving my craft room into the dining room because it's about twice as big. But it's all going to need new furniture. And right now, I just can't afford furniture. I want to get some Ikea pieces that just, I think it's, what's it called? I don't remember right now, but Ikea has a line that is just awesome for craft spaces. I kind of messed this up right here. It's great for craft spaces. And I can't, I think it's called Alex, if I'm not mistaken. The Alex line. And it's got fantastic, you know, drawers and desks and shelves and everything. And I've figured out a way that I can get those and put my paper crafting at one end and my polymer clay at the other and have plenty of room. And plenty of workspace. But right now, with the new heat pump, and it's going to take every extra penny that I've got for the next two years, it's just not going to happen right now. So I put a little thin layer of gold here. And you've probably been watching me get the edges straight. And it doesn't really matter at this point because we're going to cover it anyway. But I'm going to take these pieces of gold that are left over. And I'm going to roll, I'm going to make a little strip to go down the middle. And I'm not even going to pay much. Well, I'll, I'll do this. That's pretty much close to the same. But I'm going to put this across the middle to make it a little bit higher in the middle. And since it doesn't really matter, because this is going to be the inside, I might take a piece of this burnt umber and do the same thing. But I don't want it that thick. Let me go ahead and put it on the th thickest setting and see what I get. I'm going to fold this in half and run it through this way. And you can do this with any bracelet if you want. There we go. Now I'm going to put another piece. It doesn't even have to be straight. Down the, the middle. And this is going to give me an even bigger dome. And the best thing to do is to use your fingers to press down these edges. And 
then after you use your fingers, take a roller and roll at an angle because you don't want to get rid of your dome. But you can smooth it out a little bit. Do the other side. Just to smooth it a little bit. Doesn't have to be real smooth at this point. But this will add a little bit of height to the middle so it will dome a little bit more. And you're going to have these extra ends because the more you fiddle with it, the more it's going to stretch. And you just peel that off. It's no big deal. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, try to follow along those lines if I can. And try to take maybe three no maybe four maybe three and a half three and a half widths when I say three and a half I mean three of the four layers and then two more that are extra And then lay that down here. And I'm going to put the brown on the end. And just come down those seams and make sure that they don't come apart. I could see these are beginning to separate a little bit. But you can see, I hope, that this is forming a little bit of a dome. But don't press too much on this end because we're going to take another one. Try to cut across those squares as evenly as you can. And I'm going to butt the red up to the red. And then put that over and make sure your seams get stuck together. And see here there's just a little section. So you know what I could have done? I could have taken these and put one section on this end. And one section on the other end and then I wouldn't have to waste any more of this but since I didn't let's see and I need the brown end so I will just cut a piece maybe this big I hate to cut all those colors off But to try to match this up so they look like they go together. And then cut this off. And don't throw away any of these little pieces because these little pieces would make nice earrings. You could cover a bead with them. There. Now, since this didn't come out over the edge, I will trim probably inside. I'm not going to make it as wide as this bangle is. That's why I said don't worry about trimming it, because I wasn't sure exactly how wide I was going to make it. But go back and mend all of your seams. If you see any that are pulling apart, you know, make sure that they go together. And 
then I think I would use a craft knife because I think you can be straighter with a craft knife. Except this isn't pushed down as much as the rest of it is. And just trim off this gold right at the edge. And we'll only make it that wide. And try to get it as straight as you can. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. The important thing is just to get that gold off now that we've established how wide we want the bracelet. And here, this went over the gold, so you do have to trim off a piece of the cane that came over the edge. And then do the same on the other side. And I won't make you watch. I'll fast forward through this too. Okay, now that everything is trimmed, except the ends, I haven't done the ends yet, and that's because we're still going to manipulate this a little bit. Still try to fold these ends down, just round them down with your thumb, so that only the gold underneath will show. See how it's rounded, how I rounded it down? You don't see any of the gold, all you see is the design. And, of course, where these seams come together, you, you want to make sure that they're smooth. And then just keep on going. Just keep... And if you press with both thumbs, you have a tendency to keep the edges a little straighter. Because when you do this, you're just rounding down those edges. Okay. Then we want to trim off the ends. I 
can see you can see the bottom the brown and the gold down there so if you can take that and just pull that down so all you see is the design just gives it a nicer finished look and same thing over here trim it see how you can see the brown and the gold in there and this is the inside of one of those cells so if you just fold that down be careful that it doesn't separate like that did right there if it does just press it back but just cover up that gold and brown on the ends and where I just was holding that I've got thumbprints down in it so I need to round those back out a little bit just get it as the way you like it if you like if you like me I like to take a piece of patty paper on the wax side and lay it on there I can do this without whole putting fingerprints in it again and just rub it it kind of smooths out any fingerprints and then just move it down and go to the next section just don't let any wrinkles get in your paper like I just did this is kind of awkward being a bracelet it's hard to hold but you can do use any method you want to get your fingerprints out of it and now would be the time that you would want to put your little slit in the end actually I think I'm going to use oh my bales box is open I think this time I'm going to use some little bales, except my copper ones aren't in here. I was going to use little copper bales. They must be somewhere else, so I think I'll just use these little screw hooks. Screw eyes, not screw hooks. Tom Holtz. Tim Holtz. and just kind of push one in here and push one in here I'm going to have to find my copper bales because that would have looked real pretty on here but then afterwards I can attach a little chain or whatever to these and they will be just make sure that this clay is sealed around them so that they will stay bake this in the oven for at least an hour maybe even longer and then take it out and shine it up and you will have a beautiful fall bracelet isn't that pretty? It almost looks like a pumpkin when you look at it this way. Isn't that pretty? So I hope you liked this. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I am going to spend more time smoothing it out. But I wanted you to see what it would look like finished or when it is finished. And I will be doing another polymer clay video next Monday. And I want to thank you for watching. Bye-bye.